Today we are heading to the premier destination here in Guatemala, Lake Atitlan. Known as the most beautiful lake in the world, this premier destination in Guatemala is very hard to get to. It's gonna test your vehicle. That does not sound good. Test your patience. Woo! And test your sanity. I just feel like it's sitting there staring. Let us know in the comments below if the destination is worth the journey. And be sure to subscribe because we're going to nine countries in nine months and this is just the beginning. Yes. We are super excited but have heard nothing but horrible reviews about the drive there. It's supposedly so gnarly that you can burn your brakes up and there's like nowhere to stop along the way. Oh, also it's raining a little bit so that makes it extra fun. Dropping from over 10,000 feet down to the lake and I'm pretty sure the lake is around like maybe 6,000 feet, 5,000 feet, it somewhere around 4, there. It says 4,800 on here. Yeah, so just below uh, 5,000 feet. So that's a 5,000 foot vertical change downhill. It's wild. Woo! He was trying to avoid a pothole, but he just like braked in the middle of the road. You're on your game. A game, Frank. I have to be. <laughs> just trying to stop a truck this heavy trying to stop much In about five minutes we're gonna start to descend into our destination so can everybody put their seatbelts on and put your chairs in the upright position we'll be making a right here soon and then we'll be slow rolling and descending to the lake the highway has been very smooth but this is where all the warnings begin smooth for the passenger because I've been dodging potholes <laughs> I don't even want to puke yet it's great this is the weirdest least official turn Oh, what's all the honking? What's all the honking? The truck behind us. Oh my goodness. There's always these little cute towns that you wind up having to go through. The weirdest thing about the cute towns are the mannequins. I see these mannequins and I'm like, is that a person? And then I'm like, oh snap, that's a mannequin. It makes me feel so awkward because I just feel like it's sitting there staring. They're just, they're so realistic looking where in the United States, I feel like they're very bland. You or know, they're like, behind they're like plain. a wall. Yeah, but there's not, or there's like no face structure to them. There's no eyeballs dro drawn in. Here it's like fully a face. Getting through town was a piece of cake. Now we are on the brake burner section of the road. Alex is in a piece of cake, you know, it's really a piece of cake when you're sitting over there. I mean, come on. It's, I think it's just because you're such an excellent driver that you're making all the right moves. It's smooth, it feels great. Paco and I are very comfortable because you are amazing. Ah, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the love. That makes me feel good about my drive and that looks downhill signs. Look how downhill it is. And it's getting pretty narrow too. Our main GPS doesn't even believe that we're on the road. <laughs> I mean, how could it not be? No matter what you do, you're gonna be burning your brakes here. Nice one. Thank you. Look how downhill this bitch is. That's wild. He's almost a car lower than us and he's not that far ahead of us. Yeah. What is that sound? That does not sound good. It's like a chug, 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 chug. We're thinking there might just be a rock in the brake pad. It's actually pretty common for Pro Masters to get something stuck. In, there's like, I don't know, it's like a wafer kind of, and so rocks really easily get stuck in there. I'm clearly describing this very well. So we're going back up again. So hopefully that doesn't mean we have another big down. The warning was for the road that we already made it through. So nice work, Frank. Thank you. I smelled a little bit of brake burning though. A hundred percent, there was some smell. I don't know if it was me or the car in front of us though. We'll find out later, but that little squeaky noise is gone, so that's good. Now there's just one more section of really horrible looking switchbacks, and we'll be at our campsite. How are you feeling, by the way? I feel pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I feel fine. That's awesome. Yeah. Normally Alex is like... I actually feel kind of hungry. Trying to eat rice crackers the whole time? No, yeah. I feel like hungry, like I want a snack. <laughs> I can see the lake. Oh, oh wow. my god, that's beautiful. Wow, this is a brake burner right here for sure. Oh, sugar snaps, but look how cool. 
Ignore the ice cream truck. Enjoy the view. Uh, you break, I'm just making sure I got a hang of it, where it is. <laughs> it would be rough making this drive in an RV. This guy's just honking his horn and pulling out to the other side and making a big wide <laughs> turn. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit, mm. It's catching up with me, but all my rice cakes are in the back. The guy in front of us exhaust plume isn't helping. So like, this is some serious shit. Hey man, if the ice cream truck can make it, we can certainly make it. Nothing said anything about a river crossing. This exhaust from this uh, ice cream truck is just killing us right now. Look at it, it's pluming blue. Oh, it smells so, so bad. Something's not right there. No. Oh, it's taking cash. Hola amigo. Hola. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Uh, uh, español solo un poco. Five. Five? Five quetzal. Five quetzal? Change? Change. Gracias. Gracias. Adios amigo. Adios. Surprise! I think we're the only ones who got charged though. No, the guy in front, had, they exchanged bills. Oh, did they? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just a gringo tax. Yeah, bye. Uh, might be harder to drive through town than it was on the highway. Do you know where you're going? Uh, straight. I'm supposed to go straight, see? Wow. Tight squeeze, buddy. These little towns in Guatemala are so narrow and tight and like really difficult to navigate in the big van. And Google Maps is no help at all. Cause it's like, go that way. And you're like, it's not a freaking road, Google. I don't know what. I don't know what you're talking about. And then maybe it's a road for these guys. Oh, the towns also all have pretty low hanging lines. So, another obstacle to look out for. Uh, San Marcos, um, Pasa Hiccup? Pasa Hiccup? Pasa Hiccup? Pasa Hiccup? Si, San Marco. Si, it's a, yeah, si, gracias. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Shit like, shit like this is stressful, you know what I'm saying? Uh, white people. <laughs> We've definitely found all of the tourists. And now the cobblestone. I think of that. No! Uh, no, this is correct. I think. So the last section of the road is not paved. Did you get in touch with the guy, by the way? Uh, yeah. I told him we'd be there in less than an hour. one of those places where when you do find a campsite you end up staying there for a while because you don't want to drive again so you're like you know what we made it here we're gonna stay a lot of these places they give you a whatsapp phone number and so you have to call and let them know that you're coming but now we ring the bell baby would you ring my bell ring my bell ring it <laughs> oh it's hilarious you have to step up to ring it I'm so hungry. Me too. Be snacks. Hola. It's a serious game. Hell oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So we went on a little tour of the property. He showed us where our spot's gonna be. It is beautiful. Don't tell this man you have a chihuahua. <laughs> he will not let you stay here if you have a chihuahua. The drive-in is gonna be a little bit tricky. Probably another reason why you end up staying for a little while, because it is Wicked annoying, probably, to get in down here. Look at this tight boy. In the bushes. I have a choice. Yeah. You don't realize how uphill it is until you're going downhill. I mean, walking up it was like, I don't even remember. I think I need a chihuahua. You like not even like a little bit chihuahua. Like people look at you and they're like, definitely not a chihuahua. He is a uh, Jack Russell. <laughs> Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> We've got our guide, and now we need to make it to the camp spot. Metal poles, side turns, brake burning, you know, we got it all. Is that Canada? Yeah, it's Alberta. Yeah. We have also haven't seen other human beings in a really long time, or van lifers. So it's cool that there's at least a couple people here who are 
in the nomad community. Maybe we'll get to show you some friends. <laughs> he was like, don't hit the wall. Don't hit the plant. I think I did pretty good. Yeah, you did great. How's that? Perfect. You look good in the back? I think we're a little bit this way. You're down? I think it's okay. We were so hungry, we had to put something together. We got some tempeh with some rice. A little avocado smashy thing and some fresh homemade tortillas that we picked up before we left town. We're gonna mow this and then we're gonna show you the coolest thing about this place we're staying at. Yeah, I think this is like an apple banana. Hola. Yeah. Hola. 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 So good? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. See? It's a little bit more dense. Yeah, definitely. It's but not it's very as good. I think it's not as sweet either. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> very good, yeah. A little watermelon delivery? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Holy crap. So refreshing. It's like just the right amount of like acidity too. Yeah. The banana like cuts the orange perfectly. So now we're gonna go check out the Hippie Highway, oh. which is apparently the cool spot in town. <laughs> we decided to go grab some food elsewhere, but it, what's amazing is all of a sudden you make like this turn and you're in this alleyway and you're walking to a random restaurant. An alley nowhere. in an alley. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. So the place we just came to to eat was just like this like wooden shack on the side of the road We tried here. to go to another one, but there was no dogs allowed. We tried to go to another one. We literally couldn't find it on the map, but we were like searching like, where is this freaking place? Then we tried to go to another one and it said, sorry, close for lunch. And then we looked at a Japanese spot, but we weren't really that intrigued. And now we're at this spot. It's the wooden, little wooden shack. I don't even know what it's called, but the lady's literally across the street here. She had to go over there to buy the vegetables to make the meal. So it's fresh. As fresh as it can be. Uh, dos. Dos. It is corn with lime and salt. Never had that before. It's definitely harvest season here, so all of the corn is fresh and local. Can't get much better than that. Plus our meal is being home cooked right behind us. It smells so good. Yes, it does. But 
The lady showed up right here with corn and we're like, we're hungry now, so let's get it. It's corn. It's got juices. It's got the juices. Oh my God, that's perfect. That's really good. It's like the best corn I ever had in my life. All right guys, don't judge me. I'm gonna show you how I eat corn so you never get it in your teeth. So once I got a little opening, I go line by line and you kind of just pop it out. The lime is so good. Yeah, yeah, right in the middle. I'm trying to do it that way. <laughs> no matter how you eat your corn, it's corn. It's got the juices. Normally they say you put the lime in the coconut, but in this case you put the lime in the mice. So good. Oh, gracias. Muy bien. Mm, bueno. Oh, mon dieu. Now I feel like I have too much food. <laughs> I don't. Mine's just the right amount. Mm -hmm. The corn was... 5Q each, and the meals are 30Q and 35Q. Yeah. Lunch was so good, that was amazing. The dinner or lunch, I guess lunch. Dinner, liner? Liner, liner. Uh, and then we also got a uh, some dessert a as well. Oh, treat. so good. <laughs> and that was 15 Qs, so Not total bad. of 80. I'll take yeah. it. I think even though we didn't get to go to any of the restaurants we actually wanted to go to or we're trying to go to, that worked out perfectly. Yeah. So that we got to go support a local woman with a small little business, delicious homemade food. She was cutting it up and grilling it right there. So good. And now time for the walk back to our home. We're going to the farmer's market inside of the retreat. They bring it here every Thursday. So if you're camping, you don't even have to go to town to get your groceries. It's kind of perfect. <laughs> it's very perfect. Man, your sack is uh, sag is getting very heavy very quickly. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, look at all the stuff here. It's literally everything you can eat. <laughs> Hello. Missing a tooth or just a strange tooth? No, no just, he's, it's just yeah, on its way. It's out, just, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's how he, he opens cans with it and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got the pineapple. We got the goods. Alex could barely even carry that. She's probably going to ask me to carry it right when we get off this camera. But this is amazing that it comes right here and it costs us 110 cues, I'm going to call them because I always say it wrong. <laughs> We've been settling into life here at Lake Atitlan, Guatemala beautifully. And thanks to our Patreons, we can afford this campsite. But something's gotta give. We are at a little bit of a crossroads. It's time for us to 